So, in this talk, I'd like to talk about glow. We might otherwise call this radiance. And this is a particular phenomenon of subjective experience. This is a very particular thing that happens. And it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful when you can see it in others. And it's very beautiful when you can see it for yourself. When someone has glow, it is as if there's a kind of light coming out of them. And it's a bit tricky to put your finger on it. It's a bit tricky to really know or see exactly what's going on with it. And yet it's undoubtable. It's undeniable when someone has glow. And in a sense, it's not something you aspire to directly. It's not something that you really set out to get for yourself or to attain. It is much more a natural byproduct. And in fact, it is much rarer that we even see our own glow. Our own glow is really there for other people to see within us. It's not something that we make for ourselves to enjoy for ourselves. And I don't even know if it could be such a thing as that. So for us to understand the glow or the radiance that comes out of someone who has a kind of subjective purity to them or a subjective beauty within them, what we have to do is look at shadow work. So shadow work is the dark side. It's facing the dark side. And of course, it's perfectly logical that in order for you to have glow, you simply have to remove the darkness within you. And that's essentially what shadow work is, right? It's a multi-step process that brings about a kind of glow by first recognizing what is your dark side and then spending some time to express and embody and explore that dark side and then having time to allow that to subside and what remains is glow. What remains is something beautiful. And it is a process, which means there does have to be an allocated time for identifying what your dark side is and an allocated time for embodying that dark side and an allocated time for allowing that to come forth or allowing the dark side to subside while the beauty comes forth. And it can be as simple as allocating just a few minutes to each one, right? You can say 20 minutes for this, 20 minutes for this, and 20 minutes for this. You could do it in an hour. And maybe we will look at some structures like that a little bit in a moment. But to really illustrate this thing of going into your dark side, I want to make it really clear for you what that means. If you scream at the top of your lungs as loud as you possibly can, what you'll find is that 
your voice starts to wear out. And if you continue to scream when your voice is worn out, you'll find that the energy goes into the rest of the body and your body starts to wear out. And if you continue to scream when your whole body is exhausted and your voice is worn out, what will happen is you will lose your voice. You'll be unable to scream anymore. You won't be able to make a sound and only air will come out. And if you keep screaming past that point, your body will eventually collapse in exhaustion. Now, if you cry and you cry as much as you possibly can, what you'll find is that you'll become dehydrated. You'll start to feel thirsty because your tear ducts in your eye have become empty and they've been pushed to become refilled. and they've been emptied again, and then you're becoming dehydrated. If you continue to dr cry when you're dehydrated and start drinking water as you do this, what you'll find is that you will become rehydrated from the water and your tear ducts will be replenished by the water. If you continue to cry beyond this point, eventually what will happen is you will discover there is a correlation between drinking water and crying. And you'll notice this cycle, this physiological cycle happening with your eyes and your hydration and the water. If you continue this crying and you continue this cycle, what will happen is you will notice eventually, or what will happen, it's not something you notice, it's something that actually happens. Your body will come to exhaustion. Your body will collapse from exhaustion, from crying so much. Now, next example, third example. We've got screaming, we've got crying. Now we've got moving your body. If you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to move my body in every single possible way that I can possibly imagine it could do. This is often very well done with the aid of music. So it's basically dancing. If you say to yourself, I'm going to dance and move my body in every single possible way that I could possibly imagine or come up with, bursting off all the limits to my kinesthetic information, then what you'll find is a whole range of new movements that your body can do. It's staggering how many different movements and ways in which the body can act. It can move in all sorts of combinations. It can do stretches. It can do fast movements, slow movements violent movements, eloquent movements, things that almost strain the muscles. Now, of course, in this, <laughs> there is actually a risk of injury, right? People do actually hurt themselves when they go into this work. And that's part of the learning, learning your limits. 
But even within the limits of not injuring yourself, there is a vast range of bodily movements that you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine. And if you say to yourself, I'm going to go into this all the way, I'm going to keep going until I completely physically collapse. Then you find something new. Now, these processes, these physical processes of screaming, crying and dancing. They are the physiological grounding to the emotional and phenomenological spectrum. They are the things that you go into to really relish and bask in your dark side. And it is a kind of reverse behavioral technique when you do this. Because we can say, like, if we're working with anger, what makes you angry? And we talk about it and we talk more and more about what makes you angry and you keep talking. If you talk long enough, what will happen is you'll get angry. You'll start to have the feeling of being angry. Now, we can reverse that. Instead of saying, talk about what makes you angry, we can just say, act angry. And if you act it and you really go into it, It'll start out as acting. It'll feel a bit funny, a little bit inauthentic. But then you'll find that the real anger will come and it won't be about something. You will will not be angry at something. Of course, many things will come to mind. But it's the process happening from a different starting point. And of course, this is very powerful with screaming, with tears, with dance. Because starting with the physical foundation allows for any part of the emotional spectrum to come forth within you. Now, of course, a lot of it is the dark side, right? The dark side naturally wants to come forth. When you first start out this work, it's the dark stuff that comes up. And what you'll find is if you do these techniques and you are going into your dark side for a time, there will be an afterglow. And just just imagine how you're going to feel when you've collapsed on the floor from screaming so much that you've lost your voice and crying so much that you've become dehydrated and dancing so much that you have literally exhausted every fiber of your body. Just imagine how that's going to feel. Now, when someone comes up to you, and talks to you in such a state and they witness you in such a state, they're not going to be seeing any anger within you, right? (laughs) The anger that you feel, the anger, the frustration, the pain that you feel is going to be far, far away. It's going to be long gone. It's going to be completely washed out. And that removal of that anger anger, or that feeling, whatever it is, it's just an example, allows for the glow to come through. Now, of course, when we work on shadow work, it is a multidimensional process and it does accommodate for many parts of the physical body and the subjective experience and the emotional spectrum. And what I'm meaning to say is that exhaustion is not the be all and end all, right? So don't take from these examples that you should exhaust yourself. 
Not exactly. It is that you should find that your proportional expression of your dark side and embodying of your dark side allows for your awareness of that component within you. And it's not something you can de deny. We have jealousy within us. We have anger and hate within us. We have selfish desires. We have animalistic desires. We are vengeful. We are scheming. We are manipulative. We are only out for ourselves. We're out to get and gratify whatever it is that I want. Give me, me, me what I want. And it's a very powerful thing to consciously encounter that. It's literally a reverse suppression. Have you ever wondered what the opposite of suppression is? Freud has this idea of sub submerging things in the unconscious that you're afraid to look at, right? This is a classic sort of classical psychology idea. And there's weight to it, right? There's something in that. This is essentially what we build off when we do shadow work. But the opposite of suppression is this exact process of opening up to the dark side. Imagine you've got a box of darkness and you open it up. Right? That's the metaphor. And of course, if you open it up and it's anything like today, it's quite sunny today where I am, the light comes in. <laughs> and the reason so many people don't walk around as glowing angels is because they can't face their dark side. They trick themselves into thinking, oh, I'm actually not so bad. I'm actually a good person. And you do have to be careful with these psychological concepts because you can't take it to mean that, oh, now you should go around and be nasty to people because that's your true self, <laughs> right? We don't want any of that, no. Shadow work is its own process that's done in its own time. And it's best done as a formal process. Which means you allot a specific amount of time for doing it. And once you've done it, it's done, it's over. You go back to your normal self. Now, I'm going to ascribe some homework. Now, unlike the homework that we had previously, where you listen to music and see inside how it moves you, this homework is going to be optional. So you'll see if it's right for you or not. And this will just be an example of what you can do by yourself. So this will be a 40 minute exercise. Two sections, 20 minutes each. What I want you to do is go into a room and make it very dark. If you can make it cold. And for 20 minutes, you're going to listen to sad music. And you can just find any random generic playlist wherever, right? You can just type in sad music, music for lonely people, heartbroken music, right? If you, if you just type in sad music, that should be enough to find something. It can be generic. Remember, the music is not there as something you like. It's just an aid for this. So for 20 minutes, you're going to be in a dark room. Close the windows, make it as dark as you can and listen to sad music and you're going to be sad. 
You're going to, if you can, cry. Cry with your sadness. Now set a timer so you know how long you've been. And when the 20 minutes stops, you immediately stop the music. And then I want you to leave the room and go outside, somewhere bright. If you can, sit in a garden. And in that garden, you just sit quietly with your eyes open and notice how you feel. Now remember, the more deeply you go into the sadness, the more of the sense of the taste of glow you're going to get. And it can happen in 20 minutes. It really only takes 20 minutes. And another thing that will help that is good for this is if you don't have a room which is very dark, some, sometimes it's good to use the bathroom. So in a lot of houses, the darkest room is actually the bathroom. And what you can do is make that very cold by putting the cold shower on and sitting on the floor. So that can be a cold, dark room, depending on your setup, right? Wherever you are, if your bedroom's good enough, then that's good enough. But that's just another idea that I've heard has been very good. So 20 minutes, set your timer, pick your music, sad music, and be sad for 20 minutes. Cry if you can. And then go outside where it's bright, daytime, and just sit comfortably. You want to have your chair set up. You want to have your space set up in the garden or wherever. If you're lucky enough to have a garden, then use a garden. Otherwise, just set up a chair somewhere bright on the porch or wherever. And have it all set up so that you don't have to fiddle around with things as you're doing it. You want to have as little fiddling around as you have, as you can, right? Ideally, when the 20 minutes goes off for the first section, you just want to stop the music, stop the timer and go straight out and sense the feeling that you get. Now, if you want to spend some time helping going into the sadness, you can just spend a few minutes thinking about what makes you sad. And really, you can do that as you're doing that first 20 minutes what makes you sad and just go into sadness, go into it consciously and see how that feels. That's the prescribed homework. I do leave it as optional for this one. And there's many forms in which we can practice this, right? And I've chosen sadness because it's one of those ones that's quiet. Uh, perhaps an emotion like anger is easier to force, but I think for most people, you don't want to upset the neighbors, right? If they're screaming and punching, <laughs> I don't want to cause too much of a ruckus and you probably don't want it to cause too much of a ruckus. And, and really that's, that's the beauty of being able to do a formal group that is real shadow work because then you're given a space where you can scream and you can actually go deep into those more elaborate expressions. But at least in the comfort of your own home, you could do sadness, right? So if you're feeling like this is resonating with you and you wanna get a sense of what it means to glow, to really have your own glow, your own clarity, then do this exercise, 20 minutes, sad music, crying, 20 minutes sitting outside. And you'll notice that after crying, there's a phenomenon that happens in the eye. There's a clarity and clearness that happens in the eye. That's a physiological process. There's a clearing. There's a clearing of the darkness and a glow that comes out of the eyes as a physical thing. It's very real and it's very tangible. And it's a beautiful thing. So good luck with it. I hope that it's something that you can really open up to. I know it's a bit out there. It is quite mature. It really does take a fair amount of emotional awareness and emotional adventurousness to do something like this in your own home. But I really think it's worth it. Now, there's not much homework in this course, right? So if you can do it, really do do it. Most of this stuff, we're just talking about ideas and all you have to do is listen and take your own notes. So because there's not much homework, take this chance to do it. So when you're ready, go ahead and do that. And then afterwards, we can come back and we will continue the course.